Since we bought Avocet in 2018, Chris and I have worked hard to reinforce the structural integrity of our boat. Through every refit, we become more familiar with Avocet's design and layout, touching nearly every inch of the boat in the process. With that said, there was one final piece of Avocet that was left untouched by us, and we finally had the time to address it. It being our mast. Although our 48-foot mast had treated us well the four years we had owned Avocet, we could see clear signs of corrosion and the shivs at the top were failing. Additionally, we had some hardware to install that would bring our mast up to date with all of the other improvements we have made aboard. We knew that this would be a relatively quick project, but there were definitely a lot of parts to it, starting with dismantling and a lot of sanding. What do you think? We did it. It's off. I was pretty nervous, but it's off. Today I'm gonna get all of the fittings off, so all the wire, all of the line, all of the um, electronics, that all comes off today. After that, I go to stripping the paint. We have new winches to be welded on. That all can happen, I hope, tomorrow or the next day. And uh, yeah, just, again, moving really quick. Yesterday was incredibly successful. Uh, I was able to remove every single piece of hardware, every line, every fitting, every pin, every screw, and I didn't break a single thing off in the mask. So it was like awesome. The first thing I'm gonna get started on today is our welding that we have to have done on the mask. Using an angle grinder, I cut off the previous winch bases and prepared the mast for welding the new larger diameter bases in place. To paint or not to paint, that is the real question. There's a common misconception that paint prevents corrosion, but it can actually do more harm than good. Once aluminum is painted, its surface essentially becomes starved of oxygen, making it incapable of developing and maintaining its corrosion-resistant oxide coating, providing that the paint coating remains intact and that your dissimilar fasteners have a barrier, there should be no issue. With no oxygen and no water present, corrosion can't occur. However, once the coating is ever so slightly compromised, it sets the scene for corrosion to cascade, killing your mast's integrity slowly but surely. But don't just take our word for it, listen to the professionals. My name's Kim Weir, I'm a sailboat rigger here on the central coast of California, we're in Ventura and Channel Islands harbors. Um, I've been doing sailboat rigging here for the last 30 years. My opinion on the, the difference between um, mast finishes, anodizing, bare or painted, uh, is I definitely prefer anodization. Um, a good anodizing job on a mask will last a long time. I've seen a lot of old spas where the anodizing and the mask is in, in very, very good condition. There can be uh, corrosion issues at uh, you know attachment points for hardware and places that accumulate kind of the salt and the water. With bare mast, you have the, the same kind of thing. You maybe you need to be a little bit more dil diligent. Um, but as, as long as you put plenty of an corrosion inhibitor, things like that, on those masks and fittings, you, you'll be good. And as long as you keep a close eye on them, don't you know, forget about them. Every time you go up the mask, stop and take a look around, take pictures so you can actually compare the, the progress of any, any issues over time. And then it gets to a point where you need to uh, you know, attend to it, either take it apart, take the mast out and do it, or do it in place. In a perfect world, we would anodize our rig, but that is extremely expensive. So our initial plan was to leave the mast bare to let the aluminum oxidize. But I wasn't totally on board with the idea of our mast looking shabby over time, especially when we put so much effort into making Avocet shine. So I began to research our options besides paint. But before we could agree on what finish to use, we had a lot more sanding to do. taking off the paint with 60 grit sandpaper. Um, actually, really 
kind of in love with my new tool here. It's an angle grinder with a five inch pad adapter on it, but it has, and I found this at Harbor Freight, but it has this dust extractor thing on it that actually does an incredible job. So in the areas that are really hard to sand and that take a lot of time with a normal orbital sander, like the middle section, which is flat, I'm taking that out with the angle grinder. And then we're coming back on the sides with our Bosch uh, Rotex type sander, which is also a turbo driven thing. So like, it's not taking that long. Probably in total, we've had, I'd say 10, 12 hours in sanding. After the 60 grit is done, we're gonna move to 220 and that kind of stabilizes the whole surface. It, it works out all of these weird swirls that the angle ground is putting into the aluminum. We are not painting the mast. We decided that aluminum finish is the more durable solution. Uh, it's gonna make us not have issues with crevice corrosion getting underneath the paint and wreaking harm like it has for the last probably 20 years. Although leaving it bare was an idea that was approved by our rigging friends, our surveyor friends, and some other professionals in the industry. I was still a little skeptical of the oxidization because it does look more rugged. It does leave a powdery residue. It doesn't really hurt anything, but it can be a little bit messy to deal with. So I did a lot of research and I found a product called Nylic or Nylac. It's a finish that you rub onto the bare metal and it closes up the pores. So it gives you a nice and shiny, smooth finish. So instead of oxidizing and getting powdery and gross, it'll stay shiny. The best part that I like about this product, I mean, I don't know, I haven't used it yet, but what I like for my research is that you can just rub on more coats and it just soaks in. So it's very similar to when we use oil on teak, like our bulwark. Um, so that means when we're out at anchor and our mask starts looking a little shabby, we can just spend a day going up and rubbing it down with Nylon. So. That is our plan. Again, we'll talk more about that in a second here, but we are almost at the top of the mast and that means we're almost done sanding, which means we are almost done with the demo. We can start putting stuff back together maybe tonight or tomorrow. I have been sanding for the last four days. Today is the day where no more sanding is needed and the mast is prepped and ready for Nylac. Nylac is a anti-corrosive resin that is applied to the top surface and it protects it from corrosion. Uh, I'm not worried about corrosion on this mast. I know that there will be oxidation, but there is no paint on this mast. So there's nothing for the oxidation to really go crazy with because there's oxygen present on the surface of the aluminum. So Nylac is a good product from what I've been told. It lasts about three years before it needs a recoat. Um, it doesn't shed or like flake off when it fails. So it hopefully just fades away into nothingness when it does fail. Uh, and then when we want to put more on or if we don't want to put anything else back on, we'll just scotch right the surface and either leave it or apply more. So that is the situation right now. The mass has been prepped with 320 grit, so there's actually a shine to it right now. I'm definitely going to get this stuff on this product before tonight because I just want to make sure that there's no dew that's going to settle on this mass because oxidation starts as soon as there's water present. There you have it. Long night of painting, sort of oiling. I don't know what you call it. I think it's more of an oil, more of a resin compared to a paint. Uh, but it's done. It's on. Two coats, and I think it looks really good. Definitely has a good shine to it. Um, not sure how long that's gonna last, but take it for as long as it's there. Spreaders look really good. Today is day number five in the yard. I'm just starting up here at the top. I'm gonna get the, the cap shroud 
bolts for the tangs to put in. I have all brand new sheaves to put into the top of the mast with all brand new pins, five eighths and a three quarter inch uh, pin. New instruments, uh, new lights to put on the top of the mast, which is kind of the fun part, putting all the jewelry back on the mast. So you can see right in front of me this unsightly thing. Uh, this is underneath our jib halyard winch. Uh, the winch for the last 20 years didn't let any moisture or water out of the base of it. It collected it, but there was nowhere for the water to go, so it just burrowed away, of course, naturally through the mast. And so now we have this giant kind of uh, crevice corrosion pot in the middle of this base here. So it's not ideal but um, everyone's told me that it's better just to leave this because of the strength you're getting from a weld as a circle like this. The, the benefits versus the negatives of grinding this off and welding a new one on, it's better just to leave it as it is actually, it's stronger that way. So I am going to do something a little different and kind of cool. Stuff in my hand is a aluminum epoxy. I haven't used this one before, but I've used the copper version of this. It's a two part. You actually mash it together with your hands and then you stick it in here like Play-Doh uh, and it dries super hard. It looks just like aluminum. This is going to be a little darker, but it looks very close to aluminum. It's UV resistant. So all in all, it's great. And this whole tube here only costs like six bucks. When it comes to putting bronze, stainless, or any other non-aluminum metal on this mast, it's really important to have a separation between the two because if you don't, you're gonna have dissimilar metals and then you're gonna have really big problems with like crevice corrosion. So underneath these winches, I have a 332nd barrier of rubber. Uh, it's just a little self-adhesive stick. Put it on the back, cut it out, and this at least separates the bronze completely from the aluminum mast. And on top of that, I'm still using stainless screws. So of course I'm using my favorite, which is Tough Gel. It is by far the best material you can put in between stainless and aluminum fittings. I just finished drilling tapping this. I'm gonna get this guy down on top of the mast and hook it up. Today the first thing I'm going to take care of is the shivs on top of the mast. This is actually uh, reason number one we pulled the mast in the first place is that they were all frozen. Uh, the two in the front and the two in the back, half of them worked. Getting the uh, jib up on the foil was like not an easy job. Getting it down off the foil was not an easy job. So I actually had machined brand new shivs out of Delrin with a bronze bushing. And another weird thing that they did on this mast is that the pins that they use to, to keep the shivs in place at the top, well, one of them was a solid piece of stainless like this right here. The other one is this one, which is three quarters inch thick. However, it's uh, a piece of aluminum tube. So not the strongest thing. It also kind of explains why it froze because it was holding on to stainless hardware. We went into this rigging project with some experience under our belts. Having already replaced our four lower shrouds the summer prior with the help of our friend Mitch, who taught us a few tricks with the high mod compression fittings. My opinion on the difference between swedge fittings and compression fittings, I, I like them both. I think the, the, the compression fittings are really good, very strong. The only issues I've generally seen, seen with them has been incorrect installation where they haven't been um, threaded on properly or the, uh, the strands have not been uh, wrapped around the, the cone properly so, um, and or Loctite hasn't been used where recommended. Um, 
The downside is they're, they're pretty expensive, and with the introduction of, of uh, you know, Aramid rigging, they've become less desirable, I think, for the, the average cruiser to take parts and spare wire um, to replace a, a broken shroud on the fly by Aramid rigging where you can do some splicing and jury rig something to, to replace a broken uh, shroud on the, fly, on the run. In seven days, we were able to tear apart and rebuild our mast stronger and better than before. Although we could see the light at the end of the project tunnel, we decided that there was just no way we could finish it in our eight day timeline, mostly due to material delays, specifically awaiting the G10 that we needed to build our new mast up. So we took a little break to visit with family up north, bringing home our nephew Truman to help us finish off the project. Back in the yard, Truman and I finished running the halyards while Chris created our new mast up. The original mast step was made out of cast aluminum, which is not ideal for sea life because it's easily contaminated with inferior metals at the time of pouring, and it's also very porous, which leaves room for salt water and air to mix, often leading to crevice corrosion. When our mast was removed, we were eager to sift through the dust that had settled at the bottom of the step in search for the coin that was left as tradition. Unfortunately, Avocet did not have a coin hiding in her mast step, but rather something more unsightly, a three inch crack right down the center. Now, I had my suspicion that the mast step was compromised because instead of the base being flat as it should be, it was convex. Over time, water had gotten under the mast step and in between the fiberglass and the aluminum causing the metal to react and create pressure that had nowhere to go but up, which resulted in this bubble that eventually caused the mast step to crack. Always determined to build better, I opted to go with G10 to construct the new mast step, which would be indefinitely more durable due to its composition and inability to corrode. The step is incredibly strong, and it's also one of my favorites because I can machine it myself. I did this with a circular saw and a router. Um, so this is kind of, I know there's two pieces here. It doesn't really matter that much because this is just gonna be under compression. Uh, the next best thing about G10 is that you can glass it. You can use epoxy and it cures incredibly hard. No forces are ever gonna try to pull this apart. It's only gonna be forcing it down uh, towards the boat. So, and that's another just great quality about G10 is that this stuff is basically uncompressible. The tinsel rating of this is in the many, many, many thousands of pounds. So it's great for this type of application. Over the last 20 years, um, right underneath the aluminum mast step, uh, there was a bit of divoting going on. So it's just over time, I think the, the, the fiberglass is compressed a little bit. Um, this is solid laminate here. There's no core in this entire area. So I know that I'm not having any rot problems. I think it's again, just over time, the, the fiberglass is compressing oh so much. This is not what G10 is. G10 is incredibly strong to the point where when they make it, they're actually putting it into a hydraulic press and vacuum sealing it. So there's no air bubbles, there's no voids, there's no nothing in G10. That there is, of course, that going on when it comes to a hand laid up glass, uh, which is what my mast step is made out of currently. So on top of what this is, which is with the boot that actually fits up underneath the mast, I've left a quarter inch little lip here, and that's what the base of the mast is actually gonna sit on. Um, this, this is about five eighths inch thick, uh, this perimeter here, which is just what the mast won't be able to hopefully jump up and off of. Um, what this is going to sit on top of, however, is three of these uh, quarter inch G10 plates, so all of the forces that go into this piece are going to be going into these G G10 pieces, which um, again are just dispersing the load. Now, since I'm adding material, it's kind of important to take away material uh, from the boat because I don't want to actually raise the whole mast a quarter of an inch because that would kind of not make all of our stays fit very well. So. Right now, I'm just using a router bit and I'm taking off a quarter of an inch off of the original glass that was laid up on the boat here. Uh, another good thing about doing this is that I'm just creating a nice, flat, even spot for the new mast step to sit. Um, again, like I said, there was a little bit of divoting going on with this glass right here. So being able to kind of start over and have a nice, 
even playing field is just gonna make things last longer. It's using this router right now. It has a tungsten flat, uh, flat bottom bit on it. Uh, and it's kind of a slow process, but it's also a very accurate process. So once I'm done with the router, I would, I'm gonna need two seconds with the orbital to clean up all of the jagged edges and that's it. I have everything ready to glue. I countersunk the old holes because those are gonna get filled up right now. And then we're gonna just thicken epoxy everything down. Everything has been sanded, everything's been prepped. It's just time to glue it all up. Another project was coming to an end and we were ready to reunite our mast with Avocet. Today is the last day that the mast is in the boatyard. I'm um, just driving over there right now. We got last little minute things to do like put some caulk around the um, wires that go to the top of the mast. We got one more line to run through the mast, the, uh, the new topping lift, and really that's about it. So I'm just going to go over there right now, check off my last little boxes and look over everything one more time, make sure everything's all good. And then at 10 o'clock, we bring Avocet over to the yard and put her back in. My family was in town and made a pretty good audience for the event, snapping photos and videos while we scrambled to make sure everything went according to plan. Before the mast made contact with Avocet, we snuck a coin in for good luck, a gift from my brother, and our contribution to continuing one of the oldest sailing traditions. Just when we thought the project was over, we still had to replace the furler. Although we ordered the unit about a month prior to the start of our project, the unit did not arrive until three weeks after the mast was stepped. To make matters worse, the piece that attaches the furler to the boat, called a toggle, was backordered and not included in the shipment. So, we waited. And waited. And waited for the piece to arrive, keeping ourselves busy with other projects on our list. Finally, the toggle arrived nearly five months after we ordered it. So we dropped what we were doing and jumped right back into mass mode to finish the project once and for all. I have my beautiful creator headband on here um, as I go up the mast because we are measuring for a new force day. So we're gonna get that done, take that one off, put the new one up with the new furler foils and um, Hopefully we can get our new sail on so then we can finally leave and go sailing, something we haven't done in months. First thing that we're going to do here is put on our eye fitting at the top of the new head stay. Seven feet five inches. With all that being said, 
I have everything lined out with the tape measure and it, it looks like we're gonna be making it just perfectly for the new sail and the new furler in all the right ways. I get to keep the drum nice and high off of the deck. It's gonna be at a pulpit length. So the new sail is gonna get even close to the new pulpit for any chafing or fouling problems. So that's an A plus. It also means the drum's gonna be nice and high off the ground so the anchor isn't gonna mess it up. There's gonna be the perfect amount of halyard length from the top of the sail out of the sheaves. And I only have to cut one foil. So, and I still have an extra foil too. So if I really mess up, we have an entire extra foil that we can keep in the back pocket uh, in case we don't like what's going on. So we just finished assembling all of the foils. We put on our high mod stud fitting at the bottom. Uh, we're ready to lift this into place. Last thing I gotta do is put the drum on. Using the windlass, it just makes it so much easier to bring 180 pounds to the top of a rig. And I just get to enjoy the ride. Today is the day we are unbagging our brand new precision sail. It has been sitting in our quarter berth for five months because we have been doing all of the projects on the rig and we've been waiting on our furler toggle. No more excuses, we're going to install this thing, raise it and see how beautiful it is. It's, it's, it's a work of art. Well done to whoever place the sail. It's beautiful. You know what the best part of a brand new sail is? What? Listen. Do you hear it? It's so crispy. It's so big. It's giant. It's so big. It's Can't. so much bigger than our last one. Our last one was 110%. Something like that. Like around 110%, this one is 130%. So it is significantly bigger. Um, it's really cool the way that they designed it. So there's some foam pieces right there. You can actually see them with the sun shining through. And that is so the sail keeps its shape when we- Reef it. Reef it. So that's pretty freaking cool. Didn't we didn't have, have that. that with our last sail. So we're really excited. We can't wait to go sailing, but first we have to finish all of this and then we leave. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 